Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Sports Center of Las Vegas, Nevada, where the opening round in the Showbox Super Middleweight Tournament continues. And tonight it's brought to you by Gary Shaw Productions in association with Round One Entertainment, PFTC, and Showtime. Tonight's bouts are sanctioned by the Nevada State Athletic Commission. The chairman is Skip Avancino, Jr. The executive director is Keith Kaiser. Also sanctioned by the IBO, Supervisor Frank Brunette. The three judges scoring this bout will be Patricia Morris Jarman, Al Lefkowitz, and C.J. Ross. And your referee in charge of the action is Kenny Bayless. And now, ladies and gentlemen, this bout is scheduled for 10 rounds in the super middleweight division. Introducing first, he'll be fighting out of the blue corner. He entered the ring wearing the solid black trunks and he weighed in at 168 pounds. His professional record stands at 14 victories with only one defeat. All 14 wins by knockout from Cartagena, Colombia. Ladies and gentlemen, here is the Colombian super middleweight champion, Jose Luis La Pantera Herrera. And his opponent fighting out of the red corner. He comes into the ring wearing the gray trunks and he weighed in at 167 and a half pounds. He too has a fine professional record 15 victories, only one defeat and one draw, with all 15 of his victories by knockout from Las Vegas, Nevada, by way of Memphis, Tennessee. Ladies and gentlemen, here is LaFerro, Memphis Fairway Bunting. looks lazy. He's always been nice to me. Yeah, I Same way I feel too. I, that's exactly how I feel too. He's never anything that I know about. But he just looks lazy, doesn't he? You know the people who look that sleazy are sleazy. When I say you must obey, good luck. Touch gloves, but it's what Referee Kenny Bayless, our third man in. The fighters in the silver. That's LaFaro Bunting, fought three weeks ago, first round KO. He has dieted down, ran, and uh, shadow boxed his way, but hasn't sparred in over a month. This first round could be telling, Steve. Well, both guys uh, with a lot of early knockouts. What is the attitude? That's what I want to see. Right now, it looks like Bunting's pretty uh, happy to box a little bit. Jose Luis. Herrera, first time in the United States, and he is motivated, saying that he feels like he was brought here as an opponent, and there's no way that he's that. In fact, he said winning the tournament's a done deal. So confidence sky high by the man in black, and he, that power jab there is something, when he's got it going in his game, he is a doubly effective fighter. So let's see if he'll fire that jab and not just lay it out there. You're right, Steve. Bunting very cautious. Now he's doubling up on the jab. We'll see if he comes forward at all. Good power in both hands. But he is definitely reading and waiting to react. Herrera walking down Bunting a little bit, but most of the action or inaction, center of the ring. Big hook from Bunting, who again has fought at light middleweight, but says his natural weight, best weight division is this at 168. I should say light heavyweight. Well, bunting, nice combination there. Some taken on the gloves. Almost equal in terms of experience, these two guys. The big factor, of course, uh, Bunting taking this fight on short notice. How good can his timing be? Well, he did fight uh, July 15, which is actually more, much more recent than uh, Herrera. Right, first round KO of a guy who had lost his last 11 fights by first round KO. So he hardly cracked a sweat and that told us nothing. And again, he hadn't sparred uh, much even going into that fight and took this fight again on short notice. So critical if he gets past this first round and has two months to regroup, and that's a big if. LaFaro Bunting could be a dangerous proposition in the super middleweight tournament. There's Jose Luis Herrera coming forward now retreating a little bit and taking those shots on the gloves. Well, you know, Bunting told us he loves the left uppercut. He's thrown it a couple of times in this first round, hasn't connected. 
it's a worse punch you can throw from a distance because it throws you off balance and you're not protecting yourself. So he has to be very careful with that left uppercut. I think Herrera's doing a nice job of not getting careless at all. And, but I'd like to see more out of that jab from him. He's just probing, 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 looking for openings and seeing how Bunting moves. And now it's Bunting moving forward, short with the right hand. Be interesting to see what happens here after the first and any adjustments as each guy basically read each other in this first. Look, don't force the right yeah. hand. All right. I need you use your I need you use your jab and step down the center. All right. And step down the center and turn to the left. All right. Give me a little head movement. Don't leave your left hand down. All right. You gotta keep it up real good. Give him a different look. All right. Be patient. He's not bringing. Come, come. Tranquilo. Entonces, Jose, eso es lo que quiero que haga. ¿Viste? Cuéntale. Use the one-two. Both hands up. Use that one-two. Go to the second here in Las Vegas. Nick Charles with Steve Farhood, our super middleweight elimination tournament and single elimination. There is no fallback here. You're in or you're out based on your performance tonight. Will be tiebreakers. <laughs> Somebody will be advancing. Right now, this is this is it. The issue here, and the reason we're not seeing much uh, punching, is is the distance. Uh, Bunting backed up a little bit most of that first round, and Herrera kind of inched forward. But there's no commitment of movement to try to get either fighter into punching range. You can see it now. Look how far apart they are. I mean, yeah, nobody's engaging here, and still, again, I think just trying to read the moves and maybe. Find some op openings rather than create them, but I, d I would dare say it's not going to continue like this for very long. But one thing we should point out: Bunting you know, looks very fresh. He's been past four rounds one time in his career, though, Steve. He only went seven. So, would it be necessarily in Herrera's interest to drag this guy deep? Well, of course, Herrera has, has been past four once, also. <laughs> so, right now, I think they can box 173 rounds at this pace. <laughs> Now we see Bunting missing with the right, but fundamentally both guys look pretty solid. It's very hard to tell. We haven't seen a lot of flush blows. Herrera hung himself out a little bit there, missing with that opening right to the body. But both extremely cautious here. Kenny Bayless rules that correctly a slip. Nick Bunting, you can see he's got long arms, and you know that his punches came from good his knockouts came from good leverage. What upsets me about him, though, and watching him so far, is that Herrera is inching forward. He's really inching into Bunting's range. Bunting's not doing anything about it. Right. So Herrera able to walk in a little bit. I don't know why uh, Bunting is hesitating. He didn't dare. Opened up there with a nice hybrid left hook uppercut. Now with that uppercut from outside, and Herrera tries to jump on him on the way in and time his rush. Well, the, the fans like that because we got a little action, but that was a very amateurish move by Bunting, leading with the right uppercut Absolutely. from the orthodox stance. Kenny Bayless with a stern warning to watch the clash of heads. Boy, Bunting just fanned with that right. He really starting to look more and more. He's got a nice straight right that really hasn't landed, but really looking with that left hook, isn't he? Left hook or uppercut. Bunting trying to close the distance now, and we see Herrera backing up. He's the man in black. Now the distance changes just a little bit as LaFarrell Bunting in the silver and red is trying to close distance a little bit. I get the impression these guys would be very happy to stay in their corners and stand there during the Well, we would during be. The rounds. No. I <laughs> Herrera's we'll, got to turn it up. We'll take away the stools if necessary. But Herrera, yeah, we, we've seen three, four jabs maybe from him. So it hasn't been an instrument that's done anything offensively for him. We complete two here in Las Vegas. Take a deep breath. What a mouthpiece. Look, don't reach for him. Take a deep breath, all right? That's why you're missing with your right hand. You're a little bit too far away, OK? When you know you won't throw that one, two, or that hook right hand lead, you got to make sure you step right down the center, OK? Utilize your jab, you give him a look. Just don't force any punches, all right? And watch that old slow jab he's doing. 
action, so to speak, from round two. Good result for Bunting in that he sort of landed a punch, but for the wrong reason, uh, throwing that right hand uppercut as a lead punch. And Herrera got a couple of soft counters in there as well. So that was about it. You have to score that second round based on All what right we then. saw there. Okay, utilize the jab, baby. Touch him with it. Step when you touch him and you want to throw it right hand, just step down the center. All right. Deep breath. So that means you gave uh, you gave Bunting the second. Who'd you give the opening? I round? gave it to Herrera, but Nick, uh, you know, you want to argue with me, I won't argue with you. Well, it wasn't uh, the rate of attrition there. <laughs> Maybe whoever did a little bit more and didn't hurt themselves looked terrible in the eyes of the judges. Both guys fundamentally looked like they could fight. Neither guy's ever taken a beating in the ring. Bunting was TKO'd in two, down twice. So uh, just a throwout performance, he says. And that was about three years ago. Since then, nothing but wins. Herrera's only lost a result of cuts. Herrera moving in, but not really pumping that jab. Well, all those shots taken on the gloves by Herrera. And again, Danny Smith telling Bunting to get in closer and move in behind the jab to close that distance and be in range to fire the right hand. And that's the way he missed again. He's still way off. Natural southpaw is Bunting, so will he switch up a little bit? You think, Nick, there's a chance these two guys saw each other's records and knockout records and, and are tentative because of that reason? Very good point. There we see Bunting trying to put it in gear, doubling up and stepping in, stepping up really big time well, and coming know. in I with mean, an overhand right. But it doesn't look like anybody has good left hook as anything. Herrera walked in again and then got tagged on the way in that time. And here comes Bunting, he thinks he's got Herrera in a little bit of trouble. He tried to climb all over. I think Herrera, I think they locked feet, and that's why Herrera fell off balance. Oh, Bunting with his best jab of the night. Herrera and Black just marching forward, hands up, but not really coming on, coming in behind punches. A little chopping right from Herrera there landed. So each guy fighting in little bits of bursts and continuing to give and take and let the other guy make the play. Here with nothing happening, it's Herrera who seems to want to walk in, as you said, Steve, without doing anything. And Bunting not making him pay for that privilege. I'll tell you, the only action in this fight has been initiated by Bunting. There hasn't been much of it. Herrera, you see him moving forward, but Bunting's moving back. So for every half step Bunting takes back, Herrera takes a half step forward, and they're still too far apart. Well, there you go. Herrera got a little close there. He had a couple of shots in, and what happened? He didn't stay in close. But maybe enough to do something and win this third round. And here now an exchange against the ropes, and now they fire and trade some shots. We've seen Herrera in fights. He's not afraid to rumble, Steve, once he gets inside, but he's been awfully cautious about doing it. And not very wise in terms of the kind of aggression because he's walking in rather than punching his way in. Closing out the third here in Vegas. No, no, por la boca no. Bien, listo. Ya lo tiene en la mano, ya lo tiene en la mano. Escúchame. Coge aire, coge aire. Ahora le da agua, profe, todavía no. Coge aire. Action from round three. I think this was the most decisive round of the fight. You see Bunting landing a straight right hand. Left eye looks like it was a little swollen already. Herrera really not balanced enough to capitalize on the fact that Bunting is open. And you see Bunting, his hands don't come back up after he punches. He's very hittable. Look how wide open he is coming in there. Chin's up in the air. Herrera didn't take advantage. Both times. What? So both guys still a little bit hesitant to engage. Very nice. Maybe That's trying to get the other guy to react and set up counter opportunities, but here comes Herrera plotting forward again. Not behind a punch, just laying the jab out there. Just laying the left hand, really not even making contact. They're trying and following up with the right hand. 
And now it's Bunting moving backwards and not being able to fight that way off the back leg. Nick, yesterday Herrera told us that he felt he's been brought into this tournament as an opponent. As we said, yes. You know, give us reason, give the judges reason to think otherwise. He hasn't done it yet. And Bunting is wide open to be hit when he punches. So the opportunities are going to be there for Herrera. Boy, Steve, just off the get-go, my first impression, if I'm looking, just knowing nothing about a guy, there's a nice right hand from Herrera, but is he going to follow up? And Bunting just uh, inviting him in the corner with nothing there. Maybe trying to fire back. There's his counter opportunity. Nice move to spin out and trap Herrera against the ropes. He was laying in the woods a little bit. It looked <laughs> like Bunting was hurt, but he was just inviting Herrera in, and he responded with, some, with a good flurry of his own. It took four rounds. We also saw the first body punches of the fight. Herrera, rat-a-tat attack. Herrera still waiting as if he's intent on counterpunching. There's the right hand from Bunting. Nice straight right hand down the middle as Danny Smith wanted, but not behind the jab, so Herrera able to pull even straight out and get away from him. Maybe if the jab was coming first, he'd be blinded by what's next coming. A little baby left hook, as we call it, and there's Herrera in a flurry. Doesn't look like he has a lot of punching power. Too wide with the shot. And Bunting chooses not to tie him up, just put the action back in the center of the ring as he's able to step out and restart. Bunting's in silver, in the black is Jose Luis Herrera, all his 14 wins by knockout. And same with Bunting, his 15, all by KO. Something to look for, Nick. Uh, Herrera has suffered cuts over his left eye in numerous fights. So far, it's fine. But Bunting's looking to land that right hand, and as they're getting close, if their heads collide, that's something to look for. Good point. And Herrera's only loss, the result of being cut around that eye. Sit down and take a deep breath. Take a deep breath. Look. You know he's trying to throw a, a right hand, man. You know that's what he's trying to do. Look. You're gonna let him, you're gonna let him run off with these rounds and shit, all right? Utilize the jab. Utilize the jab. Keep turning. Action from round four. Certainly Herrera's best round. This is why. Finally, he gets Bunting in a position where Bunting can't escape. No movement there from Bunting. And Herrera landed some good shots and some body punches, which we haven't seen, hadn't seen up to that point at all. Bunting coming back with a little bit of a sloppy hook there, but this was all Herrera. And clearly, simple strategy, Bunting, get off the ropes. Right there, Steve. Up, right up a cut, and weave over. My, Utilize the jab. All my right? question was, Don't why did Herrera let him escape? He couldn't have been punched out. That was the biggest flurry and the most sustained action we'd seen from Herrera in this fight. And he really let Bunting out and let him spin out and get back in business in the middle of the ring and recover. Herrera just probing with the jab and not looking good doing it. Both guys, I think both corners feel that the other guy is just looking to land the right hand. We heard Danny Smith tell LaFerrell Bunting that concerning Jose Luis Herrera's offensive strategy. Oh, nice counter left hook, sweeping, but it landed by Bunting. He's looking for it again. Oh, he gets blocked with a right hand off the ropes by Herrera. Herrera gets pummeled with a left to the ribs. And now it's bunting target practice. Herrera is wide open, low blow there. Bayless warns him to keep it up, but Herrera's had the fight taken out of him. Chilling uppercut, flush to the chin. And LaFerro bunting is teeing off. Watch Kenny Bayless. He is ready to step in, and this will be an a knockdown. It's ropes kept him up. Yeah, ropes kept yeah, him, him up. Oh, it's Herrera in trouble and Bunting with a lot of time left. And enough of this one. And 
This one's over explosively. Very cautious from LaFaro Bunting, and you got to give it to him, Steve. He did create an opening splendidly. Didn't show us much the entire night, but was cautious to read and not waste any kind of energy. And Herrera wondering why it was stopped or what happened. Why didn't I do anything? <laughs> well, two points. One, Kenny Bayless, real good call because Herrera was on one side of the ropes of the corner, and then he got punched into the other side, and the ropes kept him up. That gave Bayless, calling a knockdown there, which was the proper call, gave Bayless a little bit of time to look at the fighter. And when uh, Herrera responded by sort of wobbling, Bayless called the fight. Very good call. So fifth round, it's over. Interestingly enough, on two of the cards, the fight was even through four, and Herrera was ahead 39-37 on a third judge's card. But I, I that's, why they, also. Yeah. that's why they fight 10, Steve. And as we look again at how Bunting closed it out. Well, what you see here, Bunting looks bad on three of every five punches, but he has long arms, he commits to his shots, and when his feet are on the floor, he can really get some good leverage, and that's his pet punch, that left uppercut. You're going to see one more left uppercut that's going to raise Herrera's head straight up, and I think Herrera was caught on a cut on the left eye as well. There it is. There's the that one. Now you're going to see Herrera bounce to the other side of the corner. And that's when Bayless will step in. This is a prolonged attack. Bayless could have called it right here. Couple more shots. Right there. Boom. The ropes keep him up. Bayless, good call. Now that fight could have been stopped right there, but this gave Bayless a little bit more time to look at the injured fighter. The eyes didn't look bad. He was right above us, but watch the legs. When Bayless finishes the count, you're going to see a fighter stumbling. He wants to fight, but those steps are half steps. Here it is again. And the left hook started it all. It was a counter punch, and that's ironic because it was Herrera looking to counter bunting the whole fight. And you can see that bunting is sloppy at times, and, and, but then once he gets his feet under him, long stance, long punches, full leverage. And he mixed it up well, he went to the body, and then he goes to his pet punch, that left uppercut. Hey, it's easy to land big shots when nothing's coming back, that's for sure. Well, I was very disappointed in Herrera. I don't think the guy was a complete fighter by any means, Stephen, as we see the finish here. He didn't know what to do when he had Bunting in a position. And here, Bayless wants him to walk to him, and too much hesitation there. Good Seeing call, that, yeah. Yes, that, uh, that Herrera had very little fight in him and was in danger of taking a real Memphis, beating. So Tennessee it's over Tennessee. inside at five, and as Danny South. Smith told us, the trainer South. of Bunting, four days notice. How about that? How about it, Jake Gutierrez? My treasure, my grandmother. I want the club Brownlee. Everybody in the South holding down. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Kenny Bayless stops us about at one minute, 20 seconds of the fifth round. The winner by TKO victory. LaFerro, Memphis, farewell!